This episode is brought to you by Nordstrom Rack and recorded at Spotify Studios, LA. Hey, y'all, and welcome to Trials to Triumphs. I'm Ashley Blaine Featherson Jenkins, but you can call me ABFJ. This week, one of my best friends, Mike Kai, actress Kylie Bunbury, talks to me about grounding ourselves in truth. Our conversation gave me the chance to breathe because there's nothing more nourishing than soul-bearing self-reflection with a dear friend. I'm so proud of Kylie because she bared it all and reminded me that the truth will always set us free. I was used to keeping secrets. And so then to see sort of things crumble around me from telling the truth, it made me not trust truth in some way. And the reason I can speak about this now is because so much healing has occurred and so much beauty is currently present. Hi, sister. Hi. Welcome to Trials. Oh my goodness. It's so good to be here. I'm so grateful to be here. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> like, you're just one of my favorite people in the world. You're on Trials. Mm-hmm. It's happening. You it's came happening. all the way from <sighs> New Santa Mexico. Fe. Yes, I did. You traveled in for the pod. I sure did. I had to do the in-person yes. energy exchange. I cannot do the Zoom. It's not for me. <laughs> I love you, and I'm so happy you're here, Kai. I love you, too. Okay. (laughs) So tell everyone how we met. How do we meet? Well, the story just goes that— This is like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was 10 years ago. I was living in Studio City right by Barbecues Galore. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And— I, it was just one of those moments where, you know, we had mutual friends um, that wanted to introduce us and just get a few women of color together to come up with some ideas creatively. Yeah. Um, I don't really think we came up with anything. I don't think so. I, I think, think we, we just, we just ended ended up, like, talk. talking. Yeah, we just ended up talking. Hanging out. Yeah. But, I mean, but we we really clicked right away. Yeah. Like, we, we were definitely soulmates Truly, I just feel right like away. I. What was the moment that you knew we would be sisters? Like you were like, okay, we're sisters. Ooh. Honestly, Bash, I think everyone feels that way when they meet you, mm-hmm. and it's immediate. Um, your presence, your heart, the way that you shine, the way how warm you are, how welcoming you are, how fun you are, how funny you are. So I think it was just immediate for me. I can't pick out a specific moment. I feel like it's also one of those things that it didn't really happen in words or in Mm -hmm. actions. It was more in energy. Yeah. And I just, um, yeah, I just knew I never wanted to be without you. Yeah. I I wanted to grow with you. Thank you, Kai. Because I was going to say, I feel like, from the moment we met, you were always a big part of my life. It was, it was just... It, yeah, immediate. It was immediate. Yeah, it truly was. <sighs> okay, so we're going to start with some icebreaker questions. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Just get these... Get okay, these they're going to be super really random. Well. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. What's your favorite number and why? Oh, I love three. I like odd. Mmm. Why? Yeah. I, 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 I'm odd. <laughs> <laughs> But there's like other odd numbers. So why three? Uh three. Maybe there's something in there about like the connection with mind, body, spirit. Mm. Those three things. That's really what I'm trying to work on. Mm. Using having all three of those things, you know, work symbiotically. Okay. So then my last icebreaker question is: what is your favorite comfort food? Yeah, my favorite comfort food. I like a curry. Mm. And specifically my mom's curry. I was just about to say <laughs> something that your mom is packing y- 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 and wrapping a million times. Yeah, my mom has sent me frozen pepper pot. I don't know if anyone knows what pepper pot is. Tell if us you're what Caribbean. It is. <laughs> um, I'm I'm half Guyanese and pepper pot is an amazing stew from my Guyanese heritage. But my mother froze it. <laughs> 
It's my favorite thing. Froze it, put it in a package, wrapped it with duct tape, and (laughs) sent it to my house. And did I eat it? Yes, I did. That's love. (laughs) That's love. I've had it. It's good. (laughs) Also, please explain. I think people should know that, like— your mom is not the Guyanese one. Yeah, She's no, my making- mom is no, my mom is not Guyanese. My mom is white, blonde hair, green eyes. <laughs> she is Swedish and Polish, um, from Minnesota. And she learned, she learned all the Guyanese. All and of like it. she's killing it. And she's killing it. <laughs> I know. So I know. What a mom. I, I love, love you, mom. Yeah, <laughs> we love you. What is one of the greatest lessons your mom has taught you? Mm. My my mother really knows how to love people, mm. uh, whether that's through food, through a hug, through her making you laugh with her insane laugh. <laughs> um, she, uh, I, I think my brothers would also agree with this. She knows how to love mm. um, and how to show it. And... I mean, what a beautiful thing to grow up with, yes. just to know what love feels like. Mm. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, would you describe your mom as affectionate? Yeah. Like, but, in, but, in, 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 is she affectionate in, like, words and physicality? Is she more of a word? Is she more physicality? Is it both? Mm. It's both. I would say that I get on her no- nerves more... So with like the physicality, like I'm always up in up, mm. up in her space. Um, yeah, it's it's words. It's like like I was saying. It's like it's through food. It's it's her presence. She's yeah. just um, a very vibrant, mm-hmm. wild, and I mean wild in that way uh, that I sometimes wish to be. Like mm. you know, I like a wild flower. You know. Yeah. Like, is how she's supposed to be wild, you know? Yeah. Like, like no inhibitions. Yeah. yeah. And sometimes to her detriment, of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course. <laughs> right. But there is something about um, what I'm hearing is that it just sounds like not only did your mom teach you, like, how to truly and genuinely love, but how to live. Mm-hmm. In her own way, though. In her own and way, that, of course. And... I, I also think what's interesting about our parents' generation is they're a product of their time and their level of consciousness. Mm-hmm. And so there are there are a multitude of, of beautiful things that they've taught us and also things that they were unaware of that we have learned from. Yeah. You know? This episode is brought to you by Nordstrom Rack. I'm Ashley Blaine Featherson Jenkins, host of Trials to Triumphs and proud Howard University alum. I am so excited to share with you the impact that Howard University had on my life and hope you recognize the beauty and the power of the HBCU experience. One of the first memories I have of like attending Howard is freshman year walking into the yard and just seeing so many beautiful black women and their beautiful natural hair. So many different textures, styles, colors. Um, It just, it felt like I, I was just walking around with the black beauty and black excellence all around me. And it inspired me to go on my own natural hair journey. Homecoming season is upon us. And if you've attended an HBCU, you know it's a time to celebrate and look your best. Visit your local Nordstrom Rack store or shop online at NordstromRack.com. Download the Nordstrom Rack app for even easier shopping, too. Huge thanks to Nordstrom Rack for supporting the show and celebrating HBCU Homecoming with us. Back to our conversation. I I like that you said, but in your own way. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes what we have to, what I've had to reckon with and accept is that, like, um... There's a lot of things from your childhood you also have to unlearn and, like, release and a lot. and say, like, I can't carry I this can't. anymore. One of the reasons that I also was nervous to come on here, too, is because <sighs> it's trials to triumphs. Mm-hmm. It's it's telling your story. And I'm I'm the type of person that... 
I've developed defense mechanisms, protective mechanisms, um, and have have armored up in my life. So I, I think I'd be considered a little bit more like private or mm-hmm. and when you asked me to do this, it came on my spirit that if I do this, I I should really tell my story. Mm-hmm. And in terms of the release that you're talking about, you yeah. know, um, I, as as a child, I was um, I was sexually abused for for many years, and this year has been the most um, healing um, journey or seasons of my life in terms of the release mm-hmm. um, from that. Um, I had been holding that that energy, those memories, mm-hmm. um, the the pain for decades. Yeah. What's interesting about it is that I always thought that I was sort of like on this healing journey, and that I had healed from it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then something something else happens or you or you do something mm-hmm. that wakes you up to the point that maybe this is something you really need to take a look at and really heal from and really release from yeah having suffered through sexual abuse and trauma mm-hmm. uh when you look back and when you think about it now mm-hmm. How um, how were you moving through the world while still carrying that? Mm, yeah, was it always kind of in your in your mind? Did were just certain things would it make it resurface? Mm-hmm. Just talk to me about that. Yeah, um, it's always there. Okay, there are definite triggers. Um, f- uh, for memories and things, mm-hmm. um, but it it affected me in the way that I related to people. Um, it affected me. I think the biggest the biggest way it affected me was uh, in in trust, trust of others. That's still something I'm I'm working on. But the biggest trust is the self trust. Mm-hmm. Um, We'll get back to the self trust. The other way that it, it it was it was a secret for so long. So I moved through the world, being very good at um, pretending that everything was okay. Mm-hmm. It was almost as if I developed this fantastic ability of being what and who I thought I should be or who others thought that I should be yeah. in every env- in every environment, going to school, you know. Um, so I became very good at shape-shifting and, um, yeah, becoming a chameleon, mm-hmm. which causes you to <laughs> not know who you are. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm still figuring that out. Yeah. Yeah, but because you're in this this land of secrets and you're in this land of um, shape shifting, in in a time where you're supposed to feel safe, mm-hmm. um, yeah, you just sort of lose who you are. And I think one of the biggest things that happened to me that I've come to discover more recently is that I I, I disassociate, so I'm not in my body. Uh, and so I need things like, mm-hmm. you know, the grounding stones and the breath work and and whatnot yeah. to uh, get in my body. Even just like touching my mm-hmm. touching my legs, <laughs> it's like yeah. I'm here. I'm in. I'm in my body. But the disassociating um, has been uh, a hard thing for me to, I guess, reconcile with. And is the disassociation? Uh, happening in an effort to not feel as much pain? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. 
to, to not feel the pain, to not even look at it. Oh, it's not even there. Mm. When your sexual abuse was no longer a secret, mm. was that your choice mm. or did it happen for you? And, and what changed on the other side of that? Mm. It, was, it was my choice. And everything changed. Mm. Yeah, every, every, everything changed. Um, which is also interesting, too, because it, it changed for the better because the truth will set you free. <sighs> yeah. But it changed... I I was used to keeping secrets. Mm -hmm. And so then to see sort of things crumble around me from b telling the truth, mm -hmm. it made me not trust truth in some way. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Were you believed? I was the most believed. Mm. Immediately. Amen. Yes. Good. Yeah. And that, yeah. I think, has been the sort of it has been carrying me, you know, mm -hmm. it, or it carried me, you know, through my teenage years and my, and my 20s and is, yeah, when someone believes you, mm -hmm. you know. It's everything. It's everything. It's everything. Right. And I feel like so many um, – People don't get that. Right. Oh, and my heart breaks. Yeah. They don't for that. get that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. I feel blessed. Yes. I feel so blessed that I was. 1,000%. Like, mm -hmm. I, I I feel very blessed that you were too because I think that, I know that this would still be a much different conversation if you weren't. Yeah. You would be a different person if you weren't. Exactly. Um, and like you said, it carried you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y you know? <laughs> I or I, I mean here in this in this chair, mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. When we were when I was in Santa Fe, you talked to me um, about acting and kind of um, <laughs> how what led you to acting is not maybe what people would think. Yes, the thing for me is that I've always sort of had this. Um, I've always felt weird that I I wasn't this, you know, this theater kid. Mm. Um, you know. And for for me, I've I've just always loved to express in whatever modality that is. If it's if it's dancing, if it's singing, if it's putting on little mm -hmm. plays for my family, if it um I always knew that I loved to express. Now I in that expression, I felt, wow, I I can really connect. I can connect with people. I can connect with myself. I, I love to express. Whoa, I can really heal when I express. Mm. Wow, this feels really amazing. And I also discovered that, wow, I, I can really hide. I can really, really hide. And especially with acting. Mm. Um Mm. So I think that was sort of my my compass. Yeah. Um but it logistically I was I was in Minnesota and I um I, I was modeling out there and then I met my manager who's still my manager and she she's originally from Minnesota as well and she goes there every so often to discover people mm -hmm. and so she um she met with me and said you know I th I, th I think you have something I think you should come out to LA and and try acting and I was just so <laughs> naive and I drove out a week later and then I didn't the plan was for me to to go back to Minnesota a couple months later yeah. but I, I never went back I mean I went back obviously you know for yeah. holidays and things like that and um I booked really quickly. I, I, I booked a film like very quickly. So on, on, on one hand, I was like, wait, wow, this is really easy. It was my natural ability. Mm -hmm. 
But I realized that natural ability can only take you so far. Mm -hmm. And here I have an example of someone, my brother, Teal, who plays um, for the MLS. He plays professional soccer, who is training every single day of his life yeah. for his profession. And um, that he, he's always inspired me in that way. And mm -hmm. so I started to develop craft. Yeah. <laughs> you need craft. Yeah. <laughs> Like, you need, need it. craft, yeah. Um, and I especially realized the need for craft when I um, got evicted. Mm. Um, you know, I had a little job on the side, but I got evicted, and I was just like— But, like, like what, so how did that happen? How did we go from we're in, we're in our place to, like, we're evicted now? What happened? You know, I wasn't making enough— in yeah. in film and television, and I wasn't making enough on, at my side job. Mm -hmm. And I, I got evicted. I mean, I had to be out. I went to, um, like, this, <laughs> this um, like, old, m like, motel, hotel. Yeah. Kylie, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? This is a movie. This is a movie. Okay, so you go to an old Yeah, motel. I think my uncle had sent me a little um a little bit of um, money so that I could at least just stay yeah. in the uh, in the hotel. Um and yeah, it it was a really dark time. Yeah. Well, I I just have to go back to your manager. Like seeing something in you. Mm -hmm. That not only did you not see in yourself, I guess, really in that way, but like hadn't hadn't yet come to the surface. And I just think I, right. I always love moments like that because if I look, if you look back, it's easy to be like, that's crazy. She just came right. up to you and was like, I think you should move to I, LA. I really believe in you. And like right. you now have a very full career. And yeah. I think it's very clear that this is where you were supposed to be mm. and meant to be. Um, For sure. But I think I, I love stories like that because the truth is like, she was right. She was right. Yeah. She was right. Yeah, she was. She also said something um, really wonderful to me. I didn't, I didn't like it at the time, but mm -hmm. when I did get evicted, I remember talking to her on the phone and she said, oh, Kylie, this is such a romantic time in your life. <gasps> That was her response to the eviction. I mean, obviously she. No, she's, but no, she, no, no, I love that. Though. Yeah, that I will look back and really and view it as such a romantic time in my life, and it's true. You know what I mean? It's it's what got me here. It's what I know. I but it's just so crazy too because again, I didn't. I've never heard this eviction story, so I'm like, oh, you didn't know that? No, but I'm in awe of it, and I have. When I'm at your home, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I feel alive at your home. Your home is beautiful. It's such a, a a special, sacred, anointed place. Thank you. And so to know that, like, <laughs> you have what you have now, but there was a time that you were evicted, staying in a dark, old <sighs> motel, didn't know what you were going to do, didn't know how your career mm -hmm. was going was gonna to shape out. Didn't weren't as much in your body, yeah, you know. Oh, but sure. to now know like the, the the space and the home and the life that you've created is what it is now. That's trials to triumphs. It, that's it. It is <laughs> like it it's is literally it. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I really needed to be reminded of that because I mean, I I I too have so many stories of just like feeling like not only when is this going to change, but how is this going to change? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Like there's always a win. There's always like a something because time time is moving, right? So there's always going to be something else that's going to happen. You know that yeah. joy comes in the morning, but it's the how I think for me that I'm like, how am I going to get out of this? And, and I you'll of, never predict it. And you'll never predict it. But yet I can think of seven trillion things that I've gotten out of. Exactly. And the beauty of life is that I don't always even remember how. I don't have to. It's like it's like what they say about, and we'll talk about it in a little bit, like pregnancy, right? Yeah. They say like somehow the mother just right. yeah. <laughs> forgets how crazy and traumatic it was yeah. and just remembers it as a beautiful experience. And yeah. their friends and their partners are like, wait, what? Yeah. Yeah. It was so – and the mom's like, really? No, it was fine. I want to do it all over again. <laughs> um, but I think life is like that if we allow ourselves to look at it. Yeah. I feel like, I feel like this also plays into something that I've been – I, I think we were even talking about this recently too, but that this is the learning place. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And for some reason, our society has created this ideology that we actually need to move through life in perfection. And then we place that upon ourselves. Yeah. And yeah, so we are going to get out of it because mm -hmm. this is the learning place. Yeah. I think that was Eckhart Tolle that said that. Mm. Like, that's not that's not for me. But I also <laughs> but, love that like that's basically what your manager said. Like, yes, this is yeah. It like her saying, like her <laughs> this is a romanticizing romantic, yeah, it yeah. kind of is like she's right because guess yeah. what? We're sitting here now and we're smiling about it. Exactly. And we right. have so much gratitude for where we are now. Mm -hmm. And like we know now that like you had to go through that to get to where you, you were are, going. Yes. You know, it's it, it is romantic when you think about it. Like, life yeah. is romantic. The fact that we get to live a life full of love and, and pain and, and pain and, yes. and vitality yes. and, 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 and fear, but also mm -hmm. no fear. Like, all of the things, like, that's romantic. Mm -hmm. It's it's all of those things. Mm -hmm. It gives you the, the feels inside. Yeah. So, I love that. Okay, so I want to talk about life. Yeah. Um, so you got married. To our boyfriend. It's like a it's like an inside <laughs> joke. But I just love her husband, JR. J so R. much. Yep. Um, but you got married in 2020. Yep. How has your union empowered you as a mm. woman? That's a really good question. Or what about your husband empowers you? Mm. Oh, so many things. JR is a person who really knows who he is. Mm. He has a really strong sense of self. Um, so he's not imposing. He gives space for you to be exactly who you are at that exact time and holds you in that. Mm -hmm. um, he is... He is the, 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 the structure of my life surrounding me. He is the structure, you know. It, in terms of empowering me, I think that it's the most empowering thing that you can, that you can really do is um, allow someone to be and accept someone mm -hmm as they are, and have an awareness of the consistent changes. I mean, I feel like I'm changing every 15 minutes, yeah. to be honest, and yeah. it's whiplashy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but he is a beautiful um, holder of space. Like, mm -hmm. he, he can really hold me. We're, we're opposites in all the right ways, and we're the same in all of the mm -hmm. right ways. And I really feel that us together, our, our energies together creates a lot of magic and abundance. So I'm very, very aware of what our souls together does. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a good, yeah, it's a good, it's a good brew. <laughs> a good brew. The ingredients are correct. Yes. Um, but, you know, so we've been married now for, yeah, three three years. Be it'll be four in January. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a beautiful relationship. That's my best friend. He's mm -hmm. my absolute best friend. And I love and adore him and appreciate him and seeing him as a father is just um and we've also had our our things yeah. and we've all had our we all yes. have our things yeah um but w one of w one of our things was caused by me mm -hmm. as you know um, and the reason I can speak about this now is because so much healing has occurred and so much beauty is, yes. yeah. is currently present. Yeah. Um, but I, I had an affair mm -hmm. and, um, I, 
betrayed the trust of the person that I, um, I love the most. Yeah. And I had to really, obviously, do a lot of um, excavating, sitting with myself, asking myself a lot of questions, a lot of the whys. Mm -hmm. And um, I could actually, like, feel myself kind of wanting to um, mm -hmm. disassociate right now. Yeah. Like that little circuit break in the mind where <laughs> – but um, – I, as I always say, there, there are multiple truths at yes, the same time. Yes, yes. There are multiple truths at the same time. And so in, in healing from this occurrence, mm -hmm. I had to be really honest about, about why. And I've, I've discovered that a large part of it is the the trauma of the sexual abuse. Having been hand in hand with you, I have witnessed such, and, and I talked about this with uh, with Kalei, you know, our friend mm -hmm. Kalei. Yeah. Um, and I told her that it was inspired by you, but like such willingness. Yes. It, both of you. Yeah. The and, and I realized that willingness is, is, is a major key in life, but it is a major key in marriage. marriage. Right. In marriage, mm -hmm. you simply both have to be willing. Yeah. Whatever it is to say, and again, I, I, I use hand in hand because I do feel like we were hand in hand. I, we, as your sister, I was hand in hand with you. You were. But, you, but, but JR first had to say. Yes. He, in the midst of in pain, the midst in of the pain, midst of hurt, yes. he still said, yes. Give me Let's your hand talk. Card. Let's talk. And we talked. And you talk. And so you say, <laughs> and it's, so it's actually you talking about that, like you feel like you become a different person every 15 minutes. <laughs> Even you just telling, like kind of going through a, a lot of the questions you were asking yourself about marriage. That's a different person. It's a different person. And I'm sitting yeah. here like who that was and the questions you were asking yourself is not the same person right. that's sitting here telling her story so honestly today. Right. Because I was in confusion. Mm hmm Yeah. And when I get confused, I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah. Like, what does all this mean? And I think that I was, I was also confused by my – by the fact that I wanted to – explore what all of this meant rather rather than go straight into okay whatever whatever it takes mm -hmm. let's let's make this work let's do it was wait this happened for a reason i made this decision yeah and we got we got to ask all the questions and we've got to really we've got to talk through some really hard topics yes and be more i guess explorative mm -hmm. um in in what's going on rather than mm -hmm. jumping straight to okay how do we mend this quickly yeah how do we just is it super glue <laughs> you know are we gonna super glue this right thing? or are we gonna build real pillars here? yes like there's, there's a difference super glue is a temporary fix right would you say you're on the other side of it definitely mm -hmm. on the other side of it and what's interesting is because of the willingness to be vulnerable and to communicate, even if some of the communications are ugly and yeah. maybe painful, mm -hmm. but our, our willingness to do that and to be so transparent and so honest, mm -hmm. as you know, All we are things. putting in the work, whether it's through therapy. I went on a week-long healing retreat that absolutely changed my life and helped heal so much of my trauma. Um, health is our biggest priority. Yeah. And I'm just surprised by how quickly we have repaired, mm -hmm. renewed, and honestly, we're we're better mm -hmm. than ever. Yeah. Let me ask you, okay, I want to talk about Rumi. Oh. Who was Kylie the mother? Mm. I've never said that like that. Like, Kylie the mother. My heart is more open. He is just day to day opening my heart more and more. And that is something that I've, I'm always working on is like opening or releasing that armor that I have up mm -hmm. on my heart. It's really fun. 
<laughs> I see that. It's really fun. I'm more curious about life. I'm more fascinated by life. I get to see the world through his eyes. I get to experience it and really taste every moment with him. It's a co-creation, mm. which is mind-blowing. Your motherhood journey has been really empowering to me. Really? To yeah, because you're still Kylie. Mm. Like you didn't. Yeah. You you made a choice to not lose yourself in motherhood, but give more of yourself in motherhood. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like I have more Kylie now that you're a mom. Yeah. If that makes sense. And like that's kind of what I hope to do. Like right. I hope to morph into this new version of myself, but simply be more of the Ashley that I was before because that's that's who I want my child to experience. Yeah. I want them to experience like peak Ashley. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like Ashley in her fullness. And, and, and going back to our parents, their generation, like I don't know if they knew how to do that. No. It wasn't a priority. It wasn't done for them. It's so beautiful that, like, birthing Rumi and, and becoming a mother and a wife and all of these things that have happened in your life allowed you to sit e even more fully in who you are and know you had to learn yourself, Kylie, because you right. want Rumi to know you. Right. And now you have a son who's going to say that about his mom. Yeah. And a husband who says that about his wife who can say, we, we can overcome anything. Right. We can do anything. Like, that's, that's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we're here, Kai. And it's you're such so an example true. of living. And I just, I'm so grateful that you're in my life. I love you so much. And thank you. That really means a lot. Like, I, the, the authenticity part really struck me just then because that's what I'm, I think the other day I said to Jay, I'm like, what does authenticity even mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's what we're striving. We want to just be authentically ourselves. Yeah. And I know for me, one of the things that I'm telling myself is I am no longer trying to attain some insurmountable version of perfection. Mm -hmm. For who? And for what? And it's unattainable. Duh. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and it's just the, the continuation of just like, of taking off these false coats of just, I don't need them any longer. Mm -hmm. The protective mechanisms, I don't need, I don't need you any longer. And I, yeah. I typically try to talk to them as well. Mm. Like, hi, I know, I know I needed you and I'm actually so grateful for the ways that you had you had protected me as a child. Mm. But I don't need you anymore. I don't need you anymore. Because what it's doing yeah. for me now isn't beneficial to my marriage, isn't beneficial to my son, mm -hmm. isn't beneficial to me and my life and my growth. And so thank you. But mm. see ya. Bye-bye. <laughs> it's so funny. I, as you were talking about the false coats, which yeah. I love that you called them false coats. I was thinking about Erica Badu's bag lady. Oh. And like, what's your was girl? She that's your girl. You know, girl. I love Erica, but like, it's just making me think of like her life. And what was she going through at the time where she wrote right. this song about this woman saying, You're going to miss your bus dragging all these bags, bags like that? Right. I don't want to carry it anymore. You can't, you got to let the bags go. You can't run for the bus. Right. With the bags that are dragging you down that you don't right. need anymore. Like, look down at the bags. Right. That's old. You don't wear stuff like that anymore. Right. I don't even eat that. I don't like, like, right. let them go. But it's also about acknowledging what they did do for you at yeah. a time. That was the major key for because me. Because that's how you can drop it. Yes. Ooh, that's how you drop it. You have yep. to have the gratitude for it first. Yes, that's thank what you. allows you the release. Right. Kai, what's been your takeaway from our conversation today? I think my takeaway has been that I can trust myself, mm. that vulnerability sets you free. Mm. And you got to have the right people around you. <laughs> mm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for being my sister. Always. Always. <laughs> my takeaway is be 
mindful of who God sends you. You weren't a random person who came into my life. God sent you to me. Mm -hmm. And God sent me to you. And sitting here and talking about all of the things we've been through over the past decade, the things we've been through in the past months, the past year, um, just is such a reminder that, like, God knew that we would need each other. Yes. And oh, I just so beautiful. I love you. I thank you and I and I honor you, Kylie. I'm so proud of you. I, I love you so much. Thank you for this this space. Thank you for listening. This podcast is produced by LWC Studios for OWN. The show's executive producer is Juleka Lantigua. Our managing producer is Fatima El Swiffy. Shanice Tyndall is our lead producer. Associate producer is Mona Hassan. Jordan Thompson is our marketing coordinator. This episode was mixed by Trin Lightburn. Michelle Baker is our video editor. This episode was recorded at Spotify Studios LA. If you enjoyed listening to this episode, and we hope you did, please make sure to subscribe, leave a rating, and review wherever you listen to your podcast to ensure you hear the next one. Promotional consideration, products and services furnished by Spotify Studios.